In this lesson, we'll learn how to change a constraint's rest position. So in this scene, we have a car connected to a floating magnet. So we have a little bit of animation. And the car is connected to the magnet with a parent constraint. You can see this curve at the end of the, the car, and this actually controls the car's offset position on the parent constraint. So just to take a look at that, with our object selected, that's constrained, we can move over to our attribute editor, go to our parent constraint tab. If we were to scroll to the very top underneath parent constraint target offsets, here are those parameters that have been locked down by this control object using the connection editor. So I've connected the translate and rotate of this circle into the constraints. If we were to go ahead and select that, we'll do that from the outliner. I'll go ahead and grab the constraint and load that in on the input side. So I've connected the translate and rotate of that circle into the constraints target offset channels. We can find that scrolling all the way down until we find target, expand our target list, and here they are. There's rotate and translate. So that's how we're able to get offsets on this car. All right, despite that, we can still create a new rest position for this constraint object. Now, what is the rest position? Well, that is the world space that the object rests in without a weight affecting the object, without a target object transforming the constrained object. To make this clear, if we were to go ahead and grab our car, head back over to the channel box, and go to the car's weight, if we set the weight to zero, you'll see that the car will pop to its rest position. To see this value that's used to find the rest position of this object, we can head back over to our attribute editor. So underneath our parent constraint tab, we'll find it underneath constraint attributes. So let's make sure that's expanded. Scrolling down, here is our rest position. We can use these rest positions for a majority of our constraints. If we were to go to our constraint list, the only ones we couldn't use it for are the point on poly, closest point constraint, and pole vector constraint. But everything else, and also the geometry constraint, being that it doesn't actually tie down any of our transform channels, we wouldn't be able to use it on that. But any other constraint, we can use the rest position for. So what we're going to do in this lesson is decide a new rest position for our car. Let's say if we wanted our car to have a rest position at the end of the animation. Well, in order for that to happen, we can go back to the channel box. We can set our magnet weight to a value of 1. Then we can go ahead and go to the very end of the animation where everything stops, let's say about 135. And now, with our car selected, we can choose Constraint, Set Rest Position. Now watch this. Okay, everything's normal. But, if we were to stop midway in the animation, just to check out our new rest position, we can go to our, our weight, set that to zero, and now the car's new, new, uh, the car's new world space is at the end of the animation. So again, this is just for moving the world space position of our constrained object. It's not the best to use for, for animation. Instead, what we'd want to do is animate directly on top of the constraint. And by doing so, we can use a blend parent attribute to transition between the target object and the, the rest position of our constrained object. If you'd like to learn more about animating with the pair blend node to create those smooth transitions between constraints, take a look at our parent constraint tutorial. But that's a look at the rest position in Maya. 
Again, it's just a way of deciding a new world space for constrained objects.